Hey, good morning. I'm coming at you from our new office where we moved in. I haven't done a video here yet, uh, but I was in the Word this morning. I was just going to type it all out, but I figured it's just a lot, uh, and so why type it all out? But it, it's not a lot, but it is all at the same time. I'm reading Jonah chapter 4 this morning, and the Word of God says um, that in chapter 3, Jonah goes and he preaches to the people of Nineveh, and he preaches a message of God's justice, and that is that God's going to destroy Nineveh, God shows Nineveh mercy, and then we hear the beginning of chapter 4, this change of plans greatly upset Jonah, he became very angry, so he complained to the Lord about it, didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, that is why I ran to Tarshish. Now, we don't get that conversation in chapter 1. The Bible just tells us that God told him to get up and go to Nineveh and preach it against that great city. And then he gets up and he goes away. But here we get the conversation that Jonah has with God. And the conversation that Jonah has apparently is one that Jonah says, didn't I say that this is what you would do, that you would be merciful? Now, a couple of things here. We often, um, and some of you remember that I posted just a few days ago this idea um, that was purported by a prominent Christian leader uh, that there are some texts in Scripture that are richer than others. The problem with that is we often then end up with this idea that the God of the Old Testament is different than the God of the New Testament, which makes no sense. We also get this idea that the God of the Old Testament is just full of wrath and vengeance, and all he does is burn down cities and destroy people. Not to Jonah. I mean, to Jonah, Jonah knew, even though this was the Assyria, uh, I wanted to point this out. In 2 Kings chapter 14, we hear uh, Jonah's name having prophesied uh, under King Jeroboam II. And I want to read to you what it says right up under this and then give you just a little bit more context that I think makes uh, Jonah's action a little bit easier to understand, and I'm hoping to contextualize it for you by giving you a modern day example. So when you look at 2 Kings chapter 15, the Bible says in verse 25, Jeroboam II recovered the territories of Israel between Lebo Hamath and the Dead Sea, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had promised through Jonah, son of Amatai, the prophet from Gath Hepher. Verse 26. For the Lord saw the bitter suffering of everyone in Israel and that there was no one in Israel, slave or free, to help them. So Jonah was prophesying uh, of what would happen, but you hear that the Lord has saw the bitter suffering of everyone in Israel. Now, I'm not sure of all of the time frame here, but the Bible says that these people were under bitter suffering. But then in chapter 15, we hear that Uzziah began to reign in the 27th year of the reign of King Jeroboam II. And so as we keep going through this text, what we find in chapter 15, verse 19, is that King Telplath-Helezer of Assyria invaded the land. Many have paid him 37 tons of silver to gain his support in tightening his grip on royal power he extorted the money from the rich of Israel, demanding that each of them pay 50 pieces of silver to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned from attacking Israel and did not stay in the land. So we learn that Assyria is already a power that's invading the land. And I just wonder if Jonah had seen some mistreatment or had heard about some mistreatment from Assyria, which is where Nineveh is. And I'm wondering if Jonah's like, now nah, I don't want them people rescued. They are the majority uh, right now, they are destroying our people. They've ravaged our land. Like, God, why would you go and rescue these people? A modern day example uh, for me, uh, because I am uh, a descendant of a slave in America, as I shared with somebody yesterday, just imagine if you were a freed slave in 1869 and God told you to go and preach to white slave owners in Mississippi. Like, likely you would go, you done lost your mind. Like, I don't want those people who I just watched marginalize all of these people to hear this great gospel because you will pardon them if they repent. So Jonah understood and knew, man, God's not this God of just wrath and vengeance. No, he's a God of mercy, he's slow to anger. He's gracious and compassionate, and he will show mercy to anybody who repents. So Jonah didn't want to go preach to them because Jonah knew God's gracious character. He was pretty upset. 
And he says, I went to Tarshish. I went in the opposite direction because I knew you would be merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. You're eager to turn back from destroying the people. Eager to turn back from destroying the people. I think sometimes we give God a bad rep and we act like all he wants to do is destroy somebody. No, he's slow to anger. He's filled with unfailing love. He he doesn't want, he has no pleasure, Ezekiel tells us, in the death of him who dies. At the very end, the text says, should I not feel pity on such a great city? Folks, that's the thing. Like, God longs for us to repent. I think we don't understand nor appropriate the scriptures. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in steadfast love. He's, he's wanting to show mercy. The question is, are we willing to repent? The question is, am, am I willing to sit in front of him and repent? Just a thought for the morning. I hope it blesses your morning. Love you. Peace.